What's going on YouTube? It's Mike here. Today guys, in this video, I'm going to be doing my full recap of WWDC 2014. So today is Monday, June 2nd, 2014. As you guys know, Worldwide Developers Conference 2014 from Apple in San Francisco started today. If you didn't know that, I figured I'd tell you. But basically, it's a conference that goes on for five days for mainly Apple developers and third-party application developers as well. But the first day of each conference every year is always the most important uh, to me and a lot of other people because Apple introduces, most of the time, two different OSs. Or if they don't introduce it, they just kind of revamp them. And that is iOS and OS X. And today, they brought along iOS 8 and OS X Yosemite and as you can see here I'm on Apple's landing page and in this video I'm gonna give you a full recap and overview in both iOS and OS X so I'm actually going to begin with iOS 8 because that's sort of a small one the main big one was actually OS X Yosemite believe it or not you see iOS had its turn last year with iOS 7 with the major design change, and this year it was OS X's turn. However, iOS 8 still received a lot of really cool new features and updates, so in this video, I'm going to go over them, and then later on, we'll get to OS X Yosemite. But anyways, for now, iOS 8, here you are, we're on Apple's landing page, and sorry for like looking in the different direction, filming from my MacBook uh, webcam, but I'm looking over at my second monitor next to it. But here we go, we're on the iOS 8 landing page, and it says iOS 8 Preview, huge for developers, massive for everyone else. And what they mean is for by huge for developers isn't because these are actually beta versions of iOS 8 that they're now releasing like beta 1 came out today but it's actually something completely different and with iOS 8 they're introducing a whole ton of new developer features and stuff like that that will help developers continue to create third party applications and other things uh, to integrate into iOS as well as extensions with things like Touch ID, camera and a ton of other stuff as well. So there are actually several main things that are new as you can see is this little nav bar at the top and uh, you know there are hundreds of features I'm sure but in this video I'm going to go over these main ones that they actually introduced today and the first one is photo Photos. And now every photo that you take is on all of your devices. So for example, that helps me a lot. I take all of my photos on my iPhone 5s, but now with iOS 8, I'll be able to bring them over to my iPad mini as well. And Apple also demoed a program. As a matter of fact, it's called photos for Mac OS X, which will be um, eventually put into OS X Yosemite. They introduced this new application called photos, even though it's not new to us iOS users, but basically it lets you sync your photos from your iPhone, your iPad, your iPod touch, and your Mac and it all goes back and forth so all of your photos are in one place no need to send them to each other anymore it all just works next up was messages and messages actually got a lot of features if anything besides the developer portion of iOS 8 actually got a lot of updates it was definitely messages so you can see here it says actually lol ol laugh out loud literally out loud and basically what they're trying to say here is they've added some features where you can actually do little voice recordings as you can see by this little picture here and you could send them right away um, to whoever you're actually texting and you could just communicate back and forth exactly through that you could do the same with videos you could quickly film a video and then you click this little arrow and it just sends it right off so it's, it's pretty cool what they're actually trying to do so you, now you don't even have to type you could just do voice communications back and forth you know without even making a phone call and it's nice and clear too you can also share your locations now, and this can also be done with group chats, and they've introduced a slew of new features for group chats. You can now leave group chats, you can add people, I think you can remove people, I'm not exactly sure on that. You could put do not disturb on the specific conversation if you want, like a specific group chat. You could also name them as well. And you can give out your locations in the group chat so everyone knows where you are and stuff like that. So it's pretty useful. So the next thing was design. Now, this is just a few new design aspects of iOS 8. Obviously, with iOS 7, there was a major UI overhaul. So with iOS 8, that wasn't really Apple's problem, which probably led a lot of people to be disappointed with people that really didn't like iOS 7 to begin with. Regardless, this design thing is basically a few new features which is a convenient way to respond to notifications and that's actually all the way on the end here and that one you can actually use as quick reply yes quick reply so if you get a notification on your phone you simply swipe down like for example a text message and you can quickly reply to it without even leaving the app and having to go into messages this is something a lot of people wanted for a long time I know myself especially it's one of the main reasons I used to jailbreak in order to get quick reply on my iPhone they've introduced a lot of new features for mail and now you could flag them and trash them, you know, specific emails, or you could mark them as new and stuff like that. And when you actually go into multitasking on the top now, you'll have this little bar where you'd have the most recent people that you communicated with and your favorites, which should 
should probably be done via the phone app. And you could just simply tap on any of your friends or family members and you could contact them with ease without even having to go into a specific phone or messages app. Apple did some cool things with the keyboard in iOS 8 and basically they made typing a little bit easier and a little bit more personal. So by easier, I mean when you're typing, they actually use suggestive typing. So for example, if you're saying this meeting was, Apple will automatically predict what you want to say. So for example, it'll say cool, awesome, boring, had me sleeping, stuff like that. It'll recognize how you type and what you respond to, all keeping it locally without sharing your information, obviously. And you can actually, you know, it, the device knows you more. It makes it a little bit easier for you. It's almost like predictive typing. It knows what you want to say. And it'll differentiate itself between messages when maybe you're not being so professional with your friends and being a little bit more professional over email. I don't know why Apple didn't put it here, but they're now allowing third-party keyboards as well. That's more on the developer side, I think. I guess that's why they're not really showing it to the public, but I figured I'd just throw that in there. Next feature is family sharing. This is a small one. Basically, with all your iDevices on a specific Apple ID account, you can control who does what, like if you have kids, um, or, a, you know, just family-based, I guess you could say. And you can control purchases. You can have a hotspot or kind of place to go where all of your purchases are and stuff like that. iCloud Drive is a brand new service that Apple's going to be providing. And it's it's very simple and straightforward. You can basically now transfer files anywhere from your iPhone, iPod Touch, or iPad. And I believe that's also, yes, it is going to be on the Mac with OS X Yosemite. Um, of course, you know, when it comes out much later this year, along with iOS 8. But it's pretty much any files that you could just go back and forth and pick up from. We knew this was coming, but it didn't bring fully what we wanted, and that is health integration in iOS 8. So health is a new application, I'm assuming, that is going to be in iOS 8, and basically it brings all of your health together and lets you know exactly how you are doing. I'm really hoping that this somehow integrates with the iWatch. I think it's hinting to it a lot since we've been predicting this, but I do think Apple's going to introduce the iWatch a lot later this year. This is by far the coolest feature I've seen Apple introduce. This is with actually OS X, Yosemite, and iOS 8 and that is continuity. And basically what you could do is between your Mac, your iPad, and your iPhone, you can now get a phone call, let's say for example, I get it on my iPhone, it will go to my iPad, and it will go to my Mac. So let's say I, I'm on my iPad or I'm on my Mac, and my phone's ringing, but it's on the other side of the room or it's in a different room, I can pick up the phone and listen to it through the through a speakerphone on either, I can listen to it through the speaker on my Mac or my iPad, I can listen to the exact conversation without having to pick up my phone. So basically it's still using your phone, but it's bringing it closer to you. So you don't even have to pick up your phone. They're making it even simpler. And the same goes for SMS messages. So that means people that don't use iPhones that send you texts, you'll now be able to actually read in messages on your iPad or iMac because you'll be receiving them on your phone, but it'll forward that information to your non-cellular devices. Spotlight got a few updates here and there. It actually revolves around OS X Yosemite, and that was there's a lot more features that are actually integrated into it when you search up things. So for example, if you type in X-Men, you can actually figure out the movie in theaters or a movie on iTunes, like as you can see here. And if I type in other things, it'll give me more recommended results. It'll go into all my apps, it'll go into the web browser, and just get a little bit more in-depth. So SDK was a big thing, as a matter of fact, for Apple. So instead of Tim Cook saying that like he wanted to bring these two things, you know, OS X and iOS 8 together, he actually also wanted to bring a around this SDK because they had a lot of updates to it today. He kind of called it two parts of the story. There was iOS 8 and then the iOS SDK. So there's a lot of new features for developers. I unfortunately don't have enough time to go over all of them. I'm already doing a lot. Um, but there's just a ton of new stuff. So if you want to check it out, you want to head off to Apple's website. And this includes eight... eight and this includes like APIs for Touch ID and stuff, so it's pretty cool. And then there was some little enterprise stuff that Tim Cook actually called it, and pretty much what this is, it will actually make it easy for you to set up, if you're a business, for example, and you're supplying your employers with actual iOS devices, it'll be a lot easier for you to set them up and bring all of their content onto the iOS devices without having to go through all the trouble and hassle of actually setting it up. So pretty easy now. And I always throw this in at the end, iOS 8 will be compatible with the iPhone 4S, iPhone 5, iPhone 5C, and iPhone 5S. The only device they've dropped support for, as a matter of fact, of all iOS devices was the iPhone 4. So that'll be staying on iOS 7. Of course, the iPod Touch 5th generation uh, will be getting 
iOS 8, as well as the iPad 2, the iPad with Retina display, I'm assuming they meant 3 and 4, the iPad Air, and both the iPad mini and the iPad mini with Retina display. So really the only thing that lost support was the iPhone 4 this year. And the iPad 2 is probably hanging on for its last release. Okay, so that was iOS 8. I know that was a lot, but it really wasn't that much as you would have thought. The keynote was very quick for iOS 8. So now we're going to get into OS X Yosemite, which I'm looking forward to most getting into. So we're going to navigate to their landing page right here. And this actual background that you could see here was revealed last Friday. And of course, you know, Apple goes by California landmarks now versus big cats. Um, so we automatically knew that it was going to be called Yosemite. So the big thing with Yosemite is the design update exactly as we predicted. It's completely different, literally. And like I was saying in my recap video the other day, my final predictions, it literally marries the two iOS 8 and OS X Yosemite. They're, they're literally the same. You'll ever feel in a different environment, kind of like we do now with OS X Mavericks and iOS 7. So the title is Redesign Interface, completely new, completely Mac. I'm not even going to read the rest there, but just look at this. Look at how different this looks compared to if you're comparing it with my actual desktop, my actual dock right here. So everything is different. It's got that sense of translucency, as usual, transparency. And, you know, we could see here that we have the phone call at the top, like I was telling you before, that's with an actual iPhone itself. Um, you know, the dock is all new. They got some, they got all new icons for the first time in a very, very, very long time. Even Finder was redesigned, which I found incredible. They literally went into every little detail, and it's really going to make you feel like you're using your iOS device now, which is really great. And it'll probably have you wanting to be in Apple's environment fully. It's also like a marketing type of gimmick. So I mean I could sit here all day and get into this, there's just a lot of new features in all of the applications. They basically redesigned OS X from the ground up just like they did last year with iOS 7. You know there are a lot of new Safari improvements which will actually have me switching I believe from Google Chrome to Safari based on how nice it is. There were tons of mail improvements where you can actually now go into mail and you can let's say you attach an image, you can now draw on the image with your trackpad, you could sign papers and stuff like that. It's, it's really cool. I wish I could get into all of it. Messages as I was going over before with iOS 8 and now you can on your Mac you can send SMS messages. You can also make a phone call from your Mac, I believe, uh, as long as your iPhone is in range and connected, of course. That, that goes for the same with SMS, too. And, of course, iCloud Drive, as I said before, that's like your central hub for all of your files, so you'll be able to access everything. Here's just a brief look at Mac and iOS connected like never before. Like I said, this is by far my favorite feature. As you can see here, there's an, a call coming in on an iPhone 5S, and as you can see, it lights up. Not, not like crazy, but there's just a little notification in the top right of this MacBook here that a call is coming in. And like I said, you could just click accept, and immediately you start talking through your Mac as if you were talking through your phone, though. It's literally the coolest thing. And here it tells you a little bit more about the phone calls and SMSs we were discussing before. And then there's two more features that I really liked about OS X Yosemite, and that is Handoff, which is a really cool feature as well. So basically, for example, I'll put this into perspective here. If I'm running something like Keynote or Pages or Numbers on my iPhone, let's say I have a document open on one of them, I set my iPhone down, I can actually come over to my MacBook and I can pick up exactly where I left off, let's say, for example, in Pages. And I can pick up literally exactly where I left off. The application will just open and it'll know that I want to continue to work. I think it appears right in the left of the dock. And the same goes vice versa. If I'm working on something on my Mac, if I go on my iDevice, in the bottom left corner, it'll show the application that I'm running. And I could just swipe up and pick up from my work. And another really cool one was Instant Hotspot. This is by far a feature that I've wanted for literally the longest time. So what I can now do is let's say I'm out somewhere, right? And you know that a MacBook obviously does not have cellular service. My phone does though, but I need to get on the internet on my Mac. Well, what the Mac actually does is recognizes that the iPhone is in range and will pick it up as a personal hotspot. No extra signing up charges or anything. I'm just hoping AT&T is okay with that. But basically, my iPhone becomes a personal hotspot that I can use at my MacBook to get on the web. And obviously, you'll just be paying your regular charges as if you were using an internet browser on your phone. And then just two more little things that I wanted to throw in here, not a big deal, but Apple actually brought a whole new coding system uh, to the table and a lot of developers will like this as well. For the last 20 years, they've been using Objective-C to code and officially they dropped it 
and they are bringing on Swift. I don't know if they've officially dropped it permanently yet, but they are slowly switching over to this new thing that they call Swift, and it's going to improve development for third-party apps or anything, essentially, a lot more. And you can actually now go try out OSX Yosemite today. They're actually letting the first million people that sign up try it out. Um, recently, a few months ago, as a matter of fact, they made the Mac developer program technically free, I guess you could say, so you can actually access all the Mac OS X betas now. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be as cool as these features are and as much as I want to use them. I think I'm going to wait it out because I'm hearing some rumors on Twitter right now and actually there is proof that programs essentially like Final Cut Pro are not working on Yosemite. And as you know, Final Cut Pro is an application that I use every day to edit my videos and I can only imagine what other apps are still unsupported. So I'm going to hold off for now and wait until they come out with more developer previews so that I can and still use my applications because that's just an absolute downer if I'm having a Mac that has some cool features but won't run the applications that I want. So, But if you want to go check it out, I definitely recommend it because this is by far the coolest OS X update Apple's had in probably a decade. But anyways, guys, that is it. Sorry for getting into so much detail, but I do apologize. I wasn't able to actually do my live stream this year. As I said, I've had a lot of personal issues as well as channel issues, and it prevented me from doing my live stream this year. So I wanted to give you guys a full recap and overview because I actually was watching the live keynote when it was happening. So that's why I'm able to relay all this information to you. I don't just know tidbits. I literally know everything. So I figured I'd tell you guys and let you know. I'm going to be doing a couple more videos today uh, regarding how to download iOS 8 so you want to stay tuned for that because those betas I'm definitely getting uh, but like I said I'm going to hold off on OS X Yosemite for now unless there's some sort of fix for Final Cut or whatever but that's pretty much it so stay tuned for the rest of the videos if you guys like this please leave some comments below on your thoughts of course rate this video a thumbs up and click the subscribe button below and I'll see you guys in the next video oh and stay tuned because video on this baby is coming soon yeah you know what it is see you later